Oh. <laughs> All right, that didn't turn out as funny as I had hoped, but I'm keeping it. So I've had a few questions about this logo I made and mounted above my monitors here. I figured I'd make a video and just kind of show you guys how I did it. This process can actually be used for any other logo or shape as long as it's not too complex or made out of a whole bunch of different shapes. I mean, check out this awesome rocket ship I made. <laughs> I'll also be giving this away at the end of the video if you want it, since I had to make another one for this video. I'll save all the boring parts for the end if you don't know how to make your own 3D file because I don't know anything about 3D modeling, but basically I just brought them into Photoshop, created an outline, and put the two into Tinkercad so I could create walls for the image. Now when I first started this, I was just going to do the whole thing in clear plastic and make the whole thing light up, but I wanted it to look good on the wall when the lights were off during the day, so I ended up printing the first few layers in black. And I'm still pretty new to 3D printing, but one of the coolest things I've learned is that if you print on a glass bed, that shiny smooth surface will actually transfer over to the plastic that you're printing with. I've also done some experiments with diffraction grading sheets and printing on DVDs and stuff, but I'll have to wait till I have that fully dialed in to actually make a video about it. And I tried some of this cool wood filament, which you can actually sand and stain just like as if it was real wood. So one of the most frustrating but important parts about printing something like this is making sure the bed is actually level, which is already pretty crucial for most prints. But when the face of your print is the first layer, you wanna to try to get it as perfect as possible, right? As well as ensuring the bed is clean every single time, otherwise you'll get all these weird artifacts and layer gaps in the front like this which is a lot harder than I initially expected. I mean, look at all these fails. I have stacks of them. It might be old news to a lot of people, but with most 3D printing software, you can actually set the file to pause your print at a specific height. So in this case, I just had the printer pause at layer five or something, and then switched it over to transparent PLA, and just made sure to clean the nozzle off before resuming. And I found it the hard way, but you need to be gentle while doing this. Otherwise you could shift your Z axis like me, and then the nozzle will go down too low and drag through the existing material. Here's what that carnage looks like up close if you don't really understand what I'm talking about. Hopefully someone can learn from my mistake. But eventually, I finally had a successful print, which was actually quite mesmerizing to watch, so got some satisfying footage of that really quick. And in the morning, I picked it up off the print bed, and I wasn't 100% happy with it. I mean, it could be a lot better. I think the nozzle was just a little too close to the bed, but at the time of filming this, I was running out of black PLA, and Amazon's estimated delivery time was over like two months or something, so we're sticking with it. I'm using higher density addressable LEDs for this. In comparison to most LED strips, there's just more diodes per foot. And the unique thing about these is that each LED can be assigned a different color. And if you look really close, you can actually see the tiny microcontroller inside of each LED. And to keep things simple, I'm just using a Node MCU flashed with Air Cookies WLED, which I'll put a link to in the description if you don't know what that is. But before doing anything else, I just prepped the LED strips with some longer wiring and cut them to the proper length so they could fit inside the logo. Installing the lights themselves is pretty straightforward. I treated the face of the print like glass though, since it will scratch pretty easily. 
and I just cut the strips to size and made sure to leave enough of the copper pads to connect to so I could bridge a wire over for the lights on the inside of the logo. And generally it's good practice to add some hot glue over the solder joints just because I'll be bending and moving the wire around. Now to actually attach the LEDs to the logo, I just used some cheap super glue from the dollar store and then just dab the glue directly onto every fourth or fifth LED, which I found works perfectly for this type of plastic. Then I just carefully lined the inside of the logo with the LED strips until I got around all the way to the end and then finished it off with some hot glue for extra support while the super glue dried. And then I used the wire I mentioned earlier to bridge over for the LEDs on the inside of the logo. Once that was done, I just got started on the Node MC wiring. And with WLED installed, the data line from the LED strips just connects to pin D4. This firmware also automatically adjusts the current and brightness for the lights as well. So I just powered them directly from the module to make it a little easier. And since I'll be giving this away, I just added some finesse and made sure everything was properly protected and shrink wrapped. I don't think I ever take this much care with my own projects, but I wanted to make sure it had some durability, so this step might not be entirely necessary. And I realized I hadn't tested anything up until this point yet, so I guess it was time for that Clark Griswold moment to plug it in and hope for the best. Everybody come out quick, look at the lights! <laughs> and now that we confirmed it works, all that was left to do was hang it on the wall and poke a couple holes so I could fish the wiring through and make it look as clean as possible. I mean, I might be biased, but from what this little project started from, I think it turned out looking pretty cool. And it looks even better at night while just kind of adding to the vibe of the room without being too big or overkill. I trust you guys will let me know what you think in the comments below and hopefully provide some advice or pointers for myself or others when trying to make something like this. So like I said, I'll be giving this away if you want it. All you gotta do is go online, donate to a charity of your choice, doesn't have to be a lot, give a buck or two and follow me on Twitter, then just tweet me a screenshot of proof of you donating and I'll randomly pick a winner by next month. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you want to see some more and thanks for watching. All right, I'm just gonna go over this really quickly for those that don't know how to make a 2D logo into sort of a hollow 3D shape like I did. I just brought the vector into Photoshop, hit edit, transform, and then flipped it horizontally since we'll be printing this upside down and it will mirror it. Then I just turned off the background layers and exported it by hitting file, export, save for web, and then saved it as a PNG file with transparency so there's no background. And with that same file still open, I went down to the bottom right here and lowered the same layer's fill down to zero, making sure it's not the opacity, it's the fill. Then just double click the layer's thumbnail to bring up the styles window. Enabling stroke, you end up seeing only an outline of your vector, and it makes it a bit easier to, if you set the color to black so you can actually see what's going on. Then I made sure to change it to an inner stroke so it won't change the size or dimensions of the logo at all. I don't really have a rule of thumb for the size or thickness of the outline, but in this case I just chose 10 pixels and it worked out pretty well. Once that was all done, I just exported that image outline the exact same way as before, a PNG file with transparency. And then before proceeding, I had to convert both files in this website here, which I'll link in the description. It's super simple, it just converts them to an SVG file properly so you can import them into Tinkercad. Then I just set what will be our bottom layer to one millimeter and set the piece that will be the walls of the image to about 14 millimeters and selected both shapes at the same time so I could hit the alignment tool which allows you to center both shapes over each other. Then I combine the two as one piece before exporting it as an STL file. Additionally, if you use Cura and want to implement a pause in your print so you can change the filament color during the print, import and slice your STL file then using the preview feature, you can pinpoint which layer you want to have the printer pause at. I saw here the walls start to print at about layer seven, so I made note of that, and then heading up to extensions, post-processing, modify G-code, I can hit add script and select pause at layer height. From within those settings, I changed pause at height to pause at layer number instead, input layer seven as mentioned earlier, then set the standby temperature so it wouldn't cool down, otherwise it's impossible to remove the filament. And you can even have the printer display a message for you when it pauses the print if you want. 
And voila, all that's left to do is save your file and get printing. Just remember to turn off that layer pause script for future prints, otherwise all of your other prints will pause as well. I really hope that could help some of you guys. I understand for some it might be like that infamous two-step tutorial that shows you how to draw an owl. <laughs> I'm sure there's a hundred better ways to go about this, but I just wanted to share my experience anyway. Thanks again for watching.